Hi, I'm Alan Headbloom. Welcome to our show, a place to feel like you belong. Today's guest has a lot on the ball. UNA Odendal is bilingual, switching effortlessly between English and her native Afrikaans. She played four years on a GVSU soccer squad that has a team 3.3 GPA, and she was recently named All-American on a Laker team that just won its second consecutive national D2 championship earlier this month. UNA, welcome to Feel Like You Belong. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You bet. So first of all, uh, congratulations and high fives. Thank you. You guys are national Thank champs. Thank you very much. Two years in a row. Yeah. Uh, what's the feeling for a, a last year player, a, a senior graduating soon next next semester on the championship team? Honestly, it, there's no better way to go out your senior year. It was close to home so my parents could come watch. It was very nice to have them there and the fans. and. It was actually the festival year, so every team that like went to nationals was there in one place. So we all got to mingle. It was a lot of fun, and I mean, it's a totally surreal feeling. It was so nice. Mm -hmm. So what's it like being a student athlete? Because I mean, many of us, if we remember our student days, it's hard just going to class and studying and getting grades, etc. And you have this second job called playing soccer. Yes. How do you do that? It's very hard. It's very tough. There's a lot of time management that goes on. You, behind the scenes, there's so much work that goes be, goes on behind the scenes that no one really knows about. I mean, you have practice every single day. You have to go home and you have to do homework. I mean, it's just very tough, like actually balancing school and soccer. So other than that, I mean, it's very rewarding coming out with the, the wins and everything that we have. But I mean, there's a lot that goes on behind the scene. It's very difficult. Sure, sure. And I remember when you were talking earlier, you said that sometimes you actually have to take tests on the road. Yes, normally we get tests proctored, so a coach will normally just sit there and actually watch us take the exam. It's just like you would be in class, you're just by yourself in a, in a hotel room. Okay. So. Okay. So you've obviously mastered that because yes. here you are about to graduate with, with a degree in, tell me about your, your field. Um, of, recreational therapy, therapy therapeutic recreation okay so basically it's enhancing someone to the call to oh my gosh to the quality of their life so if you want to get together with them and you play games with them and you make them gain their independence again you help them to become more like integrated with their community even though they've had like a tragic like spinal cord injury or someone who has special needs you help them and you get together with them and you include them in games or you like change games up and modify them to make them feel a part of their classroom situation so you're enhancing someone to the best of their ability to become normal again mm -hmm. it, what attracted you to this field is it because you're an athlete and you you are involved with motion that you No, definitely but um, on top of that I just really like working with people I mean it's so rewarding having to like work with somebody every day and see the the progress they're making and help them get there and it's super rewarding just like sitting there and just watching them and helping them gain all their independence again and just being that person that they were sure sure so now you've spent the last four years here in west michigan at grand valley state university uh but you're going to be going back to your uh your country not your country of origin but your country of citizenship which yes. is just north of the border yes uh, to uh in the london ontario area yes no, I'm going to go back there and hopefully I can get a job in the hospital or in an old age home or something like that just so I can actually broaden my horizon with like what I want to do. Okay, okay. And you have an extra interest in going back there. I understand there's a, a boyfriend vacuum. Yes, there is. <laughs> okay. so, so maybe we'll see, but I don't know. We'll see what goes on. I mean, you can't tell the future. So. Sure, sure. But we've invested all this energy yes. in educating you exactly. in Michigan, but you've, you've got... I'm going to take it back other places to go yes. well and and spread the good word about the nice people in Michigan exactly right? yeah yeah yes. so we were talking earlier about your your background because you're originally from South Africa and so um, uh, most of the folks uh, the European type folks in South Africa speak Afrikaans yep. a, a variant of, of Dutch and so you grew up speaking that but then your family left 
Yes, my family left just to give my sister and I a better opportunity in life. I mean, if we didn't move, I wouldn't have this opportunity to play soccer and live somewhere like in such a like nice area and meet the people that I have and have all these opportunities in front of me. So my parents just came to Canada, then moved here, obviously, for soccer just to better our lives. Okay. And actually, your parents, so you, you went through high school in Canada, in Canada yes. right? And mm -hmm. speak wonderful Canadian English. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And uh, maybe your classmates here in Michigan have teased you ever so slightly. Yes. Well, apparently, um, so whenever I'm speaking or I say, I could say, oh, I'm done homework. They always catch me. They're like, it's supposed to be you're done with homework. I honestly never thought that there was anything wrong with that, but apparently that's improper English. So they tease me about that all the time. And um, another thing is, is like when I say I need to go to the washroom, which is your guys' bathroom, I had to switch that that up because if I go to restaurants, people would be like, the washroom, like what is that? And I was like, I mean your bathroom, your mm -hmm. restroom. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So. so you're learning new vocabulary. Yes, exactly. Sure. Well, what you need to tell those people when they get a little too haughty is that Canadian English is one official variation of English. Yes. So it's, it's exactly. internationally recognized. Yes. Sure, sure. Um, so what do people not understand about Canadians? Um, I think they don't understand the fact that, like, we are exactly like you guys. I mean, it's crazy. Some people even asked if we like lived in igloos. It's just crazy how like the <laughs> knowledge that some people have if like we are talking and they're just asking like, is it always snowy there? Is it always cold? It looks exactly like it does here. There's no difference. I mean, yeah, maybe we speak a little different or we have an accent or something, but there really isn't much difference. So I mean, restaurants maybe, but that's really about it. Sure. And in fact, southern Ontario is farther south than Detroit. Exactly. Yeah, yes. So, yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Um, who is more polite, Canadians or Americans? I would definitely vow for the Canadians just because, I mean, sometimes when I'm speaking to somebody and they don't hear me normally, they say, what? But where in Canada, I was taught, or what we've learned, that if you're talking to somebody and you say you can't, you didn't understand them the first time, and you say, "Pardon me" or "Pardon," so I feel like a lot of Americans don't really understand. They're always like, "Why do you always say pardon?" It's a very polite thing. That's what I was taught. So I think it's just very different for them to hear something like that. Sure. Well, consider it that you're educating your yes. your American friends exactly. and friends and friends and teammates. Sure. Um, when we were talking earlier, uh, you talked about the the deep camaraderie that you establish working on a team with these basically 26 sisters. You're with them all the time. You're studying with them. You're playing with them. Yeah. Um, for you, is that what, what embodies a big part of your, your Grand Valley experience? Oh, absolutely. I mean, having 26 sisters on your team and you guys are all going through the same thing. If you need someone to call, if you need someone to talk to, if you feel lonely, they're there for you. I mean, we're all doing the same thing. We're all in the same boat. So honestly, it's just, you just have that much more support behind you. And going into things is just feeling so much more like powerful because you have 26 other girls behind you like leading you towards something and we're all like working together towards one goal so it's a very rewarding system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, thinking back to your roots now you left South Africa when you were fairly young but you had a chance to go back there yes. um, a, no, a short while ago. Yeah. What was that experience like? It was very nice I mean I got to see family it was crazy because they were all telling me how much I've aged how much I became like different I've gotten older I mean the typical well, in a decade like, and a half yes. Right. <laughs> um, so it was just it was very nice to see family again and like just to see wh what it was like I mean when you're so young you don't really remember a lot of things so going back at like a like an older age obviously just makes you realize how fortunate you are like moving to Canada and like just having those opportunities, like I said before, and just seeing family again was very nice, and um, seeing my grandparents, just because I don't get to see them often, so it's just very nice to like catch up and mm -hmm. actually see everyone again. Did you get to do any exotic things like safari? Well, my uncle actually owns a farm, which isn't your typical farm. It's more of a farm that has like the rhinos, it has giraffes, it's got all the different deer and everything, and it's got your typical like African lion safari. So he owns one of those, and um, we actually were there, and we got, like, the spa treatment and the whole deal going on over there. So we got to go on, like, safari rides with him, and he actually has, like, 
a little campsite in the middle of like this whole like place that has all the different wild animals and you're in the middle of this little campsite like camping out at night no one else is with you you're with your family you're just hanging out so it's very secluded and it's just very like intimate and very nice and it's super nice and it's just a very very nice country yeah Awesome, awesome. Uh, we need to wrap up here in just a second, but in thinking about your your transition, I mean, it, you didn't have any say in it as a child moving from South Africa to Canada, but you made the conscious choice to move from uh, Ontario to Michigan for your education. What would you say is is the biggest thing that you learned in in making that jump out of your out of your comfort zone? I just learned how to grow up really fast. I just learned how to be able to cope with things on my own with not having my parents there by my side and stuff. And um, I learned that I had to become more independent. I couldn't rely on certain people anymore. I had to become myself. I had to grow as a person and actually learn different things and meet new people on my own. And I just thought that um, my biggest thing is just having to grow up so fast mm -hmm. because growing up is just a crazy thing. But then at the same time, I mean, taking a like a step back and just realizing what, what opportunities I have and just me growing as a person just made me realize how fortunate I am today. So any of your fellow students at, at Grand Valley, would you recommend that they take some time and study in another country? Absolutely, absolutely, like hands down. I think it is a very cool thing to do and just going to learn a new culture, I mean, why not? Like you've got nothing to lose. I mean, go there, learn a new culture, meet new people, like expand your horizon, like just learn about yourself and learn different things about yourself that you didn't know you could do before. Mm -hmm. Super. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank really you so much for having me. By. You bet. Thank you. And for folks watching back at home, stay tuned. We'll be coming back shortly with a few segments on American language, culture, and even some humor. How does a U.S. state respond? when it is losing population. The mitten state of Michigan knows exactly what to do, embrace international students. According to the United States 2010 census, Michigan was the only state in the nation to lose population. The reason? The economic crash of 2007 and the state's heavy reliance on auto manufacturing. Well, the car industry has since come back. It's come back strong. But the population growth will not occur organically, according to experts. And that's where international students come in. A new initiative has been launched to retain the thousands of foreign-born students graduating every year from Michigan's universities. GTRI, the Global Talent Retention Initiative of Michigan, is looking to strengthen and diversify the state's economy by keeping its top international talent. While looking to retain international students from all sectors, GTRI is especially aiming to lessen the skills gap in the STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math where foreign students typically outnumber American graduates across the entire United States. Because these well-trained students develop friendships in the state, fall in love with its beauty and its four distinct seasons, it makes perfect sense that they would want to stay on after graduation if they can find jobs. And that's where GTRI comes in. It cooperates with a number of organizations throughout the state, providing international students and local employers with training and resources on immigration laws, information on finding a job, and help with cross-cultural issues that both the employees and international applicants may encounter during the hiring process. With this new initiative, Michigan is taking a proactive step forward to becoming a global hub in the American economy, which deserves a high five. <laughs> A man goes to see the psychiatrist and says, Doctor, sometimes I think I'm a teepee, then I think I'm a wigwam, then I think I'm a teepee, then I think I'm a wigwam, 
the psychiatrist says, I see your problem. I believe you are too tense.